Okay, so we're recording. We're back. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I am at Caboolture tonight. Caboolture, yeah. South East Queensland. It's a famous yeah. connection from Caboolture, isn't there? What's that? The famous country and western musician from Caboolture, I believe. Oh, yes, I believe Mr. <laughs> Urban. Mr. Urban was from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So last chat, uh, we you know introduced ourselves, and, and we we had the intention of covering what we what we've listed as our sort of main rules for meditation. But we were yapping away so much, we only got to rule number one. <laughs> Yeah, um, not that there's supposed to be any rules in instinctive meditation, but you know, right. we came up with the, these ideas of how to, how how to actually have a practice that is good for us, right? Hey, and the first one we came up with was no internal spanking, which you you um you gave a really good description of that when you were doing your teacher training. No inner spanking. Yeah. And it, it's a, it's a, I can't claim it as, as our rule or my rule. Cause it's one that I was told and taught from, from Lauren Roche, but it's just, I love the way he does bring humor into it. And when, when, you know, a lot of the time a meditation practice will be quite uh, authoritarian and, and the humor is sometimes removed sometimes, mm. not always, but no inner spanking, I think is something that, um, is also really refreshing. It, it, there is humor, there is a lightness to it, and, and it's an invitation for us to be, rather than judgmental, to be welcoming and, and, and really lovingly embracing all of the aspects of ourself. And so if a thought comes, um, and, and when I say thought, a thought could be uh, a word or a phrase or a picture or an image like Google images that like motion yeah. picture uh, memories, even sense memories. When these things happen as they most likely will, uh, we're not to like go bad mind, stop thinking, stinking thinking. And we're not, we're, we're invited not to spank ourselves, but instead take this uh, very kind of yeah, loving and, and gracious yeah. attitude of welcoming. I had a funny, I had a funny thought there um, when you said not spanking, because yeah. we talk, people talk about the monkey, the monkey mind, right? Monkey mind. And 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 the monkey mind going away, and, was, and, and it was like, <laughs> don't, don't spank the monkey, don't spank the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> let the let the let let life happen in your mind. In your meditation practice, right? <laughs> let let anything come up, whether it's funny, whether it's recollection of disastrous relationships, mm. whether it's loss of loved ones, mm. whatever it is, let it come up, and and let's not beat ourselves up about it. That we are actually reflecting on our lives when we're having a meditation practice. Yeah, 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 and. Yeah. And it's in its essence, it's it's a really simple um, rule, if you like, or really simple, yeah, uh, you know, foundation, if you like, to, to base your meditation on. No inner spanking. But I find when I, I'm teaching students, or or even with myself, it's really quite a, a complicated and elaborate skill that we have to have to develop and and it's in a sense a process that that statement no in a spanking is is a process of unlearning unlearning and unlearning yeah. from from childhood from school from you know meditation and yoga experience we might have had we need to unlearn that uh conditioned uh, way that we are constantly judging ourselves all the time i shouldn't say that or my mind mm be thinking or i so you know it, it is such that that no inner spanking is what we've given as our number one rule it's not necessarily hierarchical no, um but it's but, one we will return to again and again and again because and again. it's something that needs repetition mm. because when people when people have had these 
this practice of knocking down their thoughts for it might be years or 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 months or decades it's something that's becomes ingrained and it's something i think that we'll probably talk about over and over and over again is is accepting cherishing whatever arises and let's not beat ourselves up about it yeah and i think in in so many aspects of our life and you know speaking as as a woman as well there's so many ways where we're uh constantly judging ourselves you know whether that be our our career or our parenting style or the way we are in relationship or the way we look or the way we perform and and we're constantly assessing and judging ourselves according to this kind of measuring stick that uh you know may have been imposed upon us from from various cultures and subcultures and societies and and again it's such a, a relief to have that foundational rule as knowing a spanking as mm-hmm. as an opportunity in our most private most intimate time and in our in our inner sanctuary where we can just accept and love and embrace all of who we are regardless of the good the bad the ugly the messy <laughs> just embrace yeah. it all you know yeah 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 the invitation it's an invitation to accept whatever comes up for us right and i think um you know in a couple of weeks we'll probably talk about acceptance um, yeah yeah more, you know and yeah but knowing the spanking yeah yeah so number two what was number two did you write it down i did i, I did write it down i did write it written down and, and <laughs> this is this is one of the things i think is is um something that is really really well demonstrated to us by lauren camille yeah um that there's no gurification in this practice you know we don't have someone sitting on sitting on high giving us the instruction Mm. that we are all to follow yeah and we don't we we don't look to those people to bow down to them Mm. but we're working together with people Mm. Mm. you know um i think you've had experience of people calling themselves up as gurus Mm. yeah for sure and and yeah i went through you know my training that uh, or several different styles of training where the the meditation tools and techniques were very prescriptive you know this is it take this so it it felt for me as uh, i was having a technique imposed upon me and within the confines of these parameters how you meditate that's it you know don't deviate don't come outside of the box and and in contrast, this style, um, as you said, it's sort of a, a, a co-creative process of customizing a set of skills, a, a toolkit essentially that is uniquely adapted to your inner life, your inner ecosystem and collaborative in the sense in that we listen, we deeply listen to mm-hmm. each other and, and to ourselves and and from that, we can form this set of skills. So, yeah, rule number two, um, if you, uh, if there's a guru, run pretty much to, to thine own self be true. And, and Lauren talks a lot in, um, he does mention in his book, um, Meditation Made Easy, he talks about honouring the inner rebel. And this is something mm-hmm. I personally strongly relate to where, you know, if I'm told to, meditate this way or practice this way then but it doesn't feel right i i will naturally question it (laughs) and and i encourage my students to as well like hang on it just doesn't it it doesn't fit it doesn't suit me um and and so you know along with uh you know run away from any guru i think also honor the inner rebel within you you know listen to to him there's a a real there's a real 
move towards sovereignty that is that is part of this practice yes where yeah. you have we we have our own in authority mm -hmm. and we need to learn to listen to that and honor that that nobody nobody knows what our own inner nature is mm -hmm. no guru can tell you that you will feel some particular thing when you go into meditation nobody yeah. knows your inner essence i don't even know my own <laughs> but but that's what we're working towards developing mm. if i to listen to someone that tells me that i'm supposed to feel something in particular or or have a particular experience in meditation i think that isn't what we want to do no like, we want to, as you said, as a coach, it's about listening to what people are experiencing mm. and, and fine tuning with them what their practice is. Mm. Mm. Or practices, yeah. So, so or, that... or, yeah, what their practices are. Mm. I think last week you talked about your practice can go from this this week to this this week to this tomorrow to this in, in 10 years' time and building that toolkit. Mm. Because also, you know, we, we are changing all the time and our, our life circumstances are also fluid and, mm. um, and, you know, even our, as, as a evolutionary human being, our, our personal values also are changing, you know, according to what phase of life we're in or, or what situation we might be in and, and your values, you could say your, 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 what, what really matters to you, but, of course, it it should follow that our meditation should also be adaptive and, and changing to suit our needs, you know, and, and to meditate, you could say the function or the purpose of meditation is so that we function and perform and thrive in life and that we enjoy life and we live more and love more deeply. And, and th therefore, our meditation should become richer and richer as we mature and it should change it should change yeah so that was a long digression from run away from the guru um rule number three uh again i think lauren and camille are, are really really beautifully permissive and 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 uh honest about about this one is that if you mm. don't want to meditate <laughs> Don't, don't force it. It, it. it should never feel like a chore. Um, mm, it should yeah. feel so luxurious and, and delicious that you just can't wait to meditate. That, that's how I feel now. It was not, it yeah. used to be a chore for me, but now it's like, I don't, I, I need more time. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, like, like, like you said, you get to meditate. Mm. Um, and I suppose that that's, that comes to it, being a practice that you have, that you, that you love mm. and enjoy. And look, there's going to be times where even though you love and enjoy that practice, there's aches and pains that come up within that. Mm. But, we, but, but we work with, with people on well, little skills to, to, to manage those aches and pains. Mm. Yeah. recognizing that those are natural and normal for everybody you know yeah. um but there there might be days where your energy is not to to sit down and t spend 20 minutes it might be that you need to go for a run yeah it may be that you crank up acdc before breakfast <laughs> back in black and rock it out around around the kitchen yeah you know yeah. screaming your lungs screaming your lungs out you know yeah it might be that you just that you just say i'm just going for a walk at the beach yeah and that yeah. you know that alone that ability to uh be able to have this skill to know what you want and what you need is also a a, a really quite um, intricate, delicate, uh, almost advanced skill 
that some people have naturally, some people it take, needs a lot of work to know what you need, like a spectrum. <laughs> and somewhere we're all, we're all, that, all on that spectrum. Um, and, and I think this leads, you know, talking about being human and experiencing that full spectrum of emotions, some of them, you know, there's, there's grief, there's sadness, there's loneliness, there's loss. And, and this leads into the fourth rule where in meditation, they can all come up at, at yeah, any good. one time. And importantly, we need to be so, so tender with ourselves. No, and, that's wrong. That's yeah. Wrong. So that, that fourth rule, that fourth rule. And it's, it's probably, it's, it's as hard as not spanking. Mm -hmm. It, it, it sometimes can be even harder, you mm. know, because, because, because we can judge ourselves, you know, mm. but when I, I, tr I try to, to explain it to people like this, if you can hold yourself as tenderly as you would, as you would stroke a kitten or hold a newborn baby, which I had the pleasure of doing two days ago with my niece. Okay. With my niece, my, with my niece's niece's newborn, mm. if you can hold yourself with that tenderness mm. throughout whatever arises in your meditation practice, yeah, then you're opening doorways to change. Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I think you know it. It like you said, it, it's a big one. Being tender with yourself, holding yourself gently uh when for so many of us for so much of our life we've been conditioned to to judge and, and almost like bully ourselves and to yeah. be hard and tough on ourselves and also many of us lack the skills to be able to uh just feel those emotions you know so the big ones the big mm. emotions so um, no inner spanking, be really, really tender with yourself. They almost kind of marry perfectly together. And um, I would say almost form the, the foundation and essence of, of a healthy meditation practice. And with that healthy life, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It, there's no separation, you know, it's all a part. Mm. And, and again, that's, that's one thing that I love, really love about this style is that it's not something you do separately, you know, once a day or twice a week or whatever your schedule is. It, it's, it's weaved into moments of life. You know, it might be when you're feeding the children or you're washing the dishes or you're walking out to collect the post. So there's, there's moments where we, confuse these sort of meditative experiences into our life and when, when we're doing that more and more and more it, it tends to make the maybe the bumpy or maybe the the really challenging or even catastrophic transitions in life it, it tends to make them all kind of this one meaningful whole this rich life when we're building those skills of being able to I don't want to say pres, you know, just just presence. It's it's more than that. It's it's a relationship with ourselves that we can then have a sort of deeper, richer relationship with. Um, I think the outer world. Yeah, I think what I see and feel is that you get to navigate life with more grace, right? Mm. Um that your know, understanding of what's important changes. Mm. Yep. Um, we're coming, we, this, this practice called instinctive meditation mm. is, has, a, has another name. It's on the front of the book, kind of gateways of wonder and delight, but it has another name as well. Mm which is the path of intimacy path of intimacy. Yeah. No. And, and what we're talking about is actually opening up to intimacy with ourselves. Yeah. And to do that, you can't spank yourself mm. and you have to be not just tender with yourself, but fiercely tender. 
mm. with yourself. Yes, that, that that there's that there's nothing that can happen that I will allow that tenderness to be broken down. Mm. Nothing you can do, nothing you can say, nothing that the that life will throw at me will allow me to become harsh with myself mm. yeah you know so it's it, it, it's that being tender with yourself is fine but being that gr grounded and rooted in that tenderness that, that is just solid fit mm. and unbreakable mm. yeah yeah so that <laughs> life can come and break you 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 over and over and over again right yeah. your meditation practice will break you and break you and break you over and over and over again but it's not breaking down it's breaking open yeah you know it's, it's breaking open and you with each with each ouch with it with it with each each ouch that comes then there, then there's an inflow mm of tenderness of your own tenderness and the, and the, and the universe's tenderness. Whew. Yeah. What a, what a treat that we found it. <laughs> yeah. We found this style. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it really has been life changing in, in many ways. Um, and, and I think maybe, so we've run through the rules, uh, the four rules, and, and maybe we could wrap up this chat with just an introduction of um, one meditation technique that, that perhaps the viewers and, or listeners could, could explore. And it's a um, foundation, isn't it? Yeah, a foundational technique, if you like. <clears throat> and and uh, Lauren often refers to a technique, my dog's going to come in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a foundational technique that it, it's one that you can come back to again and again and again and 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 can have a different experience a different flavor if you like and and when when you go into a meditation like usually the the way to enter would be to pick a, a tool a, a mind tool a mantra mantra just means mind tool and, and a mantra could be, um, it could be a phrase, it could be a, a smell, it could be a sight, it could be you, you evoke a feeling. Just it might be following something that's quite tangible, like your breath uh, or, um, or, or even movement. So there could be like a mind tool that you use to enter into the doorway within to go into your meditation practice. So you choose a mantra and then you, you can also then choose uh, a, a, an attitude. So am, am I going mm. in, you know, with, with kind of a narrow focus or I want to have my, my attitude kind of broad and embracing? Uh, do I want to uh, be quite clinical and I'm just honing in on one thing or, or do I want to be more kind of very tender and loving? So you, you get to choose the, the quality of your attention and the, yeah. the, Tool that you choose another couple of qualities might might be curiosity sure. or playfulness yes you know, yep. um, all of all of the different aspects of life the life force the way that it flows through us you can go use those as doorways yeah because although you wouldn't want to have a goal, but you, you might be like asking yourself, okay, what, what is it that I need? I might need to feel more restful or rested, or maybe I f need to feel run out to a party or I've got to get to work and I need to feel more energized and, and awake and alive. And, and so again, it's just building these skills of tuning in, listening in and, and honoring the, your, the needs of your, of your inner, inner self. Um, so this, this technique that we'd like to offer, we, in Sanskrit, we call it a bhavana meditation, which, um, did you want to talk about bhavana, the word and, and, and its meaning? I think very simply, it's, it's an infusion. What is it that you want every cell of your body to, to exude? So yeah. What do I want to bring in so that 
it's in every part of me and comes out again. What do I love so much that I want to be infused by this quality? What would I like to like soak in and take a bath in or, uh, you know, absorb in my, my cells, every, yeah. every part of my body. And so we just begin a meditation by having these kind of elicitation questions or contemplations where you just get settled, get relaxed, or, or you know, maybe you're, maybe you're moving and, and you just ask yourself what, what do I love? What do I love so much that, you know, I, I want to absorb it right now. I want to take a bath in it. I want to be infused in this, this quality, this thought, this feeling, the bhavana meditation. What would I like to be filled up with? What, what quality? What, or, or you could ask yourself what, what feeling would I like to be saturated by? Or it could be, what, what's, what's a feeling that I just, I just want to spend time with? What sense, what sense memory do I want to, uh, to be with? could be what delights you or what delights me what what do i love what makes me feel alive so all of these questions and we just take a moment to to ask ourselves these questions to dive in and then release any kind of expectations of, of how a meditation should go and and just be very welcoming of any changes any uh movement of the inner world we, we we simply welcome the movement of our mind we welcome the the flow the rich and dynamic flow of of emotions the the changing shifting uh senses bodily sensations of the physical body the changing, shifting sense memories that might arise again in the physical body. So what aspect of life do you want to be with? It might be peace, it might be love, it might be courage or joy. What are you longing uh, for more of in your life? What are you craving? Or what interests you so much that you want to immerse yourself in it? And so that was about two minutes. And, and this is a, a meditation practice that uh, you might only have like 10 seconds. You're about to walk into a meeting and, and you just take a couple of breaths, maybe roll your shoulders and, you know, ask yourself, what's the mood? What's the quality that right now I want to be filled with? It's a meditation practice that you could really luxuriate in 10, 20, 30 minutes and, and allow yourself to be, um, kind of taken away by whatever it is that your, your mind body system wants to uh, take you through. Uh, but Bhavana, this infusion meditation is certainly one that I, I personally come back to often and, and I often teach this one. And in essence, it's, it's a simplistic mantra, simplistic mind tool, but can have uh can lead us into a very very profound state of of meditation qu sometimes quite quickly as well we just sort of call upon this mood and and we're in yeah so this is been um again just an, an introduction i think we'll we'll might wrap up this session and um We'll see you next time, unless you had something to add. <laughs> oh, 
I don't. I don't have anything to add, but thank you. This quality of asking yourself, what do I need? What do I want to fill myself up with? Being inquisitive and what do, what do I need right now? Mm. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful practice to start with and run through for, for, for a very long time. You know, yeah. we can, we can, we can fill ourselves up <laughs> with breath. I just need to fill myself up with breath or I need to, breathe out but that first question what do i want to infuse myself with right now it's a great great start <laughs> and something really good to leave people with yeah agreed yeah because it, it it can really reveal our natural instinctive meditations that are already there and um straight away it, it we're we're creating a tool that we can use with just a couple of elicitation questions. Very, very powerful technique. Um, but let's let's talk about some more next time. Some more tools and techniques, and maybe maybe discuss some of the skills that we develop along the way. Yes. Um, yeah. We'll see you next time. Okay, Tash. <laughs> Look forward to it. Thanks. See you, see you soon. Bye.